Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually going to be covering declaring variables and methods in Unity. So I want you to start by right clicking on the hierarchy, click on create empty. And I'm actually going to rename this game object to video, video one. And, and then just click on the game object and then go into the add component, new script. And I'm, I'm actually going to have you create a new script called video one. And I'm going to click on the gray empty area under the project, create, and we're going to create a new folder called scripts. Then you simply drag and drop the video one script to the scripts folder. And then the next thing that I'll do is actually double click on the video one. And this is basically where we're going to be doing most of our training today. So the, the first thing that I'm going to have you do is actually delete the meta update. And we also can delete this comment. And I'm using the latest version of Unity, which is 2018 3.0. And you're welcome to use any other editor. In this video series, I'm going to actually focus on using Visual Studio 2017. But if you want to use any other editor, you're welcome to do so. So the first thing that I want to do is actually focus on variables. So how do you actually go in about creating a variable in C Sharp with Unity? So there are many ways that you can do it in, you know, in a, in a C Sharp code. You can do it inside of a method. You can do it outside of a method at the class level. So I'll be going through more details about, you know, creating variables on the instance level, on the class level versus creating a variable within you know a different scope which is inside of a method so for now let's just focus on basically the the basics of how to actually declare so to declare a variable all you have to do is basically start with a type so you can have a type of an integer you can have a type of a decimal you can also have a flow you can also have you know a string you can have an object so what is actually the syntax? So the syntax is going to be, you got to start with the type, the data type. So we're going to be storing an integer and then the variable name. So this can be, so I want to store the age of the player. So I'm going to call it age. And then that follows an equal sign. So the equal sign just basically designates what the value of the variable is going to be. So I want to store the age of a person, which is 25. And if you do that and you don't put anything after the 25, it's gonna the compiler is gonna error out. It's gonna error out because you actually need to end that line with a semicolon. So that's how we can store an integer. So what if we wanted to store the name of the player? Say that I wanted to store a string, and let's say that I wanted to store the full name, and I want it to be you know the full name I want it to be John Doe. So for strings, you have to actually surround them with quotes. So if I don't put quotes around it, let's say that I do this, it's actually, the compiler is not gonna like it. It doesn't think that this is actually a string. So you need to surround it with quotes. So the next thing is, what if I wanted to store the weight of these players? So in that case, I wanted to use, you know, I, I will use a decimal because I want decimal numbers. And I wanted to store, you know, the variable I wanted to be weight. And let's say that the weight of this player, it's going to be 180.5 M. So what the M is telling the, the compiler is that this is going to be a decimal type. So if I don't put an M there, it's actually, it's actually going to complain about it because it doesn't know that this is a decimal type. So if I put an M in there, that's actually going to work. So what if I wanted to store, let's say the position of this player within the game. So for, for position where we need to be very precise, I, I am going, going to use a data type flow. So data type flow is for very large numbers, large numbers that are also gonna have a lot of decimal numbers. So if we wanted to store, let's say that we wanted to store the position and the position of this player was to say that it was, I don't know, 1000, 0002 F. So you can see that 
for the float, I specify a lot of decimal points because it's meant for scientific calculations for very precise numbers. And the word, the letter F, it tells the compiler that this number is actually going to be a float. So now that we have those variables, what, how can we actually print them out? How can we actually see the information in Unity? So for this series, I'm only going to work on, you know, just showing you what the console is displaying. So if I wanted to, for instance, display the H, I could use debug.log and then, you know, type in H. So debug.log, if you don't know what it is, is basically a way to display this information in the console. So I'll show you what it, how it looks like when you actually run the game. And I'm actually going to duplicate the variables multiple times. I'm actually going to copy the variable for full name, the variable for weight, and the variable for position. And I'm actually going to go back into Unity. And we're actually going to hit. So if you look at the panels here, each tab has basically a title. So I want to focus on the console. So that's actually how when you want to print information about your game, you can use debug.log. So debug.log is actually going to print out to the console. So now if we hit play, we can see the age was 25, the name was John Doe, John Doe weights 180.5, and the position within the game it's you know a thousand plus all the decimal numbers. So I'm actually gonna go hit play again and let's actually go back into Visual Studio. So now that we have that, let's say that you wanted to make a change to a variable. Let's say that you know for whatever reason, you know years pass by and now John Doe has the age of 45. So how can you actually change the age? So you already declare a variable in the at the class level. What I'm talking about a class level is anything that is, you know, right within the class that is not inside of a method. So this is what's called the class, basically the scope of the class, what variables are available to the entire class. So variables that are going to be actually available to methods they're going to be available to anything that is within your class. So if I wanted to change the age, I could do something like, okay, age. You know, I knew that it was 25. Let's say that I wanted to add, or yeah, let's actually add just 20 years. Let's say that 20 years went by, and now this person is 45. I could also do something with the full name. I could actually just change the full name from, you know, be John Doe. Let's say that. For whatever reason, John Doe wants to be called John Toner. Maybe this person changed cha change their name. And what we can actually do is actually print these variables after the fact. And we can actually go back into Unity, hit play, and we will expect to see two more, li two more lines. So the H was 25 then we incremented it to 45 so that's what we see the 45 here and the name of this person was john doe at the beginning and then we overwrote it with the john toner so that's how we can actually set you know the value of the variables within a method so the, ne the next thing that i want to do is i actually don't want to have all this coding here let's say that i i wanted to extract this out into its own method so Part of this video is actually to learn how to create a method. So this is a great example. So let's say that I'm actually going to cut this out and I'm going to create a new method. And this method is going to be void. So the word void, what that means is that you're not actually going to return anything. You just want to execute this method. So which means that if I create a method here, let's call this method print person information and you have to surround it with curly braces and I'm actually going to paste the information that I cut from the start right into this method. So if I go back into Unity and I hit play, you shouldn't see anything. The reason why you shouldn't see anything is because we actually have it called that method. So if we go back into Unity, go back into start, and then click on, you know, actually call the method. And to call the method, you basically type in the method name, follow with what's called with the signature. In this case, the signature is empty, meaning that it doesn't have parameters. It's only the parentheses. 
So I'll show you how to override this method in just a second so that you know how to actually create a new method with a different signature. Now if I go back into Unity and I hit play, we should expect to see the same results that we saw before when we didn't have the method. And that's what we get. Okay, so let's go back into Unity and actually Visual Studio. And there's another concept called, you know, actually creating a different signature. So the signature in here, like I was telling you, is actually empty. So it's basically a method that doesn't have any parameters. So what if we wanted to, for whatever reason, we wanted to override the H. So I'm also going to be doing a method of void. I'm actually going to copy this method. It can actually be called the same. Or if you want to call it something different, you can. But in this case, I want to overwrite this method. I want to have a different signature. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have a new H. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm actually going to change the value of H to, let's say, 100. This person got, you know, he incremented the H by 55. And I'm also going to just call print information. The great thing with this is I didn't have to implement everything that we did in here. All I did was I'm taking a new parameter, which is an integer, and it takes an H, and I'm actually changing the value of H. And then I'm actually reusing the method that I have for print person information. And by the time that I call this method, I already have changed the age. So I should see the new age display. But before I do that, I actually need to call the, the print person information. So in this case, we, we, probably, we probably didn't want to specify how to call the age. What I'm actually going to need to do is actually replace it with the variable because we want to actually pass in the new age and what I'll do here if if you actually go back and put in the parentheses you see these done these two numbers in here that specify that this method has you know a different a different method signature so the first one is gonna be you know my first one without parameters and then my next one is gonna be the one that takes in a parameter so in here I could actually say 100 so now if I go back into unity and I hit play you should actually see the age being displayed of 100, which is the, the new value that I pass into my new method. So the other question that I that I get a lot is what if I wanted to create a new, you know, a new type, but I didn't want to specify the type explicitly. So in C sharp, you can also declare a variable with the word var. So if for whatever reason I wanted to create a new variable, let's say that I wanted to create a new variable called var that had the that had an age so I can say person age but in this case you can notice that if I'm saying okay let's actually use a different number I could say 30 the what's gonna happen is the compiler is gonna try to determine what the type is based on the value that is on the right hand side so if I hover over person you can see that it already knows that it's an integer so if I do the same thing with, you know, I create another variable and I call it, let's say I call it person name. And let's say that the name of this person is gonna be John Doe as well. Let's say we call it John Doe two. And if you look at the person name, the if you hover over it, you can see that it, the compiler already knows that it's gonna be a string. So the cool thing with this is you actually don't need to specify what the type is the the problem that i see with this is when you're reading code it actually tends to take a little bit of more time when you are trying to defer the type of the variable and, and let the runtime actually find out what the type is if you specify what the type is ahead of time when you're reading through code you can actually determine exactly what the type is you can also look at the value on the right hand side so there's a lot of debates whether you know you should use vars whether not use vars and that is really up to the programmer to decide. So I'm just showing you what's available. And, you know, if you want to use var, use var. If you want to use the types explicitly, there's nothing wrong with using the types explicitly. So the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to show you that I can actually print those out. So I can actually print person age. And I can actually print that person name. Let's actually use maybe a bigger number so that we know that 
we're actually printing that out. Now if I go back into Unity and I hit play, we should see a few more lines. So we see 3333 and we actually see John Doe too. Alright, so then the next thing that I that I want to show you that I that I done quite a bit of quite a bit of work in the past is actually how to create a method that gets a value back. So in this case we're we're basically making a method that is void, but what if we wanted to return the age? So you could do something like the type and I want to return, let's say that I wanted to return get person age. And in this case, I can just do return h. So in this case, what I'm saying is, okay, I created a method that is literally just returning an integer, and it's called get person h. It doesn't take in any parameters, but I'm actually returning the h. So to use that, you can actually just go into, you know, one of your methods here, and we can actually do debug the log. And then we can say, okay, I want to know the person's age. And we can go back into Unity and actually hit play. And we should see one more line. So you see the 45 here, then John Toner. And then we're executing or get, which is giving us the 45 one more time. So you can do that with different types in unity in C sharp so what if we wanted to return the length of the full name so we wanted to say okay get full name length and there's easy really easy ways to do this but for basically to show you the power of creating different methods we can do something like return full name and this is actually part of the string class. You actually have all these methods that are, you know, pretty fine and available for you. So if you wanted to return the length, we know that the length is going to be an integer. So we want to return an integer. So you could actually copy that method name, go to our start method, type in log, get full name length. And we can actually do something else so we know exactly what is. So I'm actually going to do quotes get person h so that we know that this method is the one that is getting executed. I'm also going to do the same thing with the other method that we just created. Perfect. Now let's go back into Unity. I'm actually going to hit play. And if you hit play, you can see at the very bottom that get person h is returning 45 and get full name length is returning the value of 10 because John Doe has 10 characters in it so that's really why it's giving us the, the length of 10. So that's really everything that I wanted to show you in this video. If you guys have any questions let me know through the comments and thank you for joining the channel for subscribing the channel and don't forget to share this video. Thank you guys.